Over the past six months, I have posted on YouTube a number of video clips of you speaking at London Hyde Park Speaker's Corner. Why did you decide to speak there and how were the Nation of Islam received? Okay, my brother, well, Hyde Park is a very, very interesting place. You know, in trying to establish the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad in the United Kingdom, it became apparent to those of us in the nation that the enemy was not sleeping and that the enemy was very much on his watch. And the enemy, for instance, whilst we were based in Shepherd's Bush uh, for a number of years, uh, there were many incidents that demonstrated to us that the enemy was very much attacking us. And there were many articles written in newspapers and magazines and other articles and television programs would be produced about the Nation of Islam, much of which was um, propaganda and lies and slander and innuendo and many things which were very negative uh, being put out in order to booby trap the minds of the people against the nation of Islam. And so at a point in time it was determined by the brothers in the nation of Islam that we had to become proactive and go out into the public in order to give the people from our own mouths the reality of who and what we are and also uh, to give the combination of good news to those who wanted good news and warning to the government in order to say to the government we are aware of what you are doing we are aware that you are aware of us and we want you to know that if you attack us then you will be the loser and so the idea was really to go and take it to the government in particular and the media in general to let them know that the nation of Islam was here that we were not running away from them and in fact we would run to them and so that was the idea uh, behind going to Hyde Park Speaker's Corner because today is a new day and we recognize today that we are no longer Negroes Coons Pimps and Muggers and all of the ugly names that black people have been labeled with we are the original man, the Asiatic black man, and we are the original people of the earth. And we recognize that our only leader, teacher, and guide, and the only one that we submit to is Almighty God Allah. We do not submit to white people. I'm going to say that again. We do not submit to white people. You are not our masters. We don't bow down to you. And if you try to force us to bow down to you, we say to you, get thee behind me, Satan. Because you are no longer going to be our Lord and master like you did in slavery. You made us call you Massa. You made us bow down to you. You made us afraid of you. And you taught the black man and you taught the black woman that we were nothing. Come on. Niggers and coons. And that we never contributed nothing to history. And that you found us in Africa swinging through the trees with a bone in our nose. On, and you did us a favor by bringing us on a westerly course into the western hemisphere to civilize us. Teach. That's what you taught us. You stole our language. Our culture, our name, our God, you banned us from manifesting our very nature. And you forced us to adopt your culture, your language, and your way of life. And you became our surrogate mother. That's why they call this one England, the mother country. And you made our children, and you made our parents to bow down to you. And so we are here to declare... Live in England. That those days are over. Under the Queen and country. And we today, as members of the Nation of Islam and members of the black community, are determined to build our own reality.
Hyde Park, uh, the history is, is pretty deep and profound. You know, it's a place that was established way back in the 17th century. And, and, and it, it is, uh, it was then and is still now what's called a royal park. And it was where the well to do would ride in their, you know, horse and carriages and basically live, uh, um, aristocratic lifestyles. And also what happened in that area, in that region, very close to Hyde Park, is another little place called Marble Arch. And apparently, historically, right there was where there used to be a public hanging place where they would hang criminals and other people on a regular basis. And the legend has grown up that part of what would happen when they were about to hang the person who was condemned to death was that that person would be given the opportunity to make a statement either of contrition or if he wanted to, um, you know, uh, say something of negativity about his detractors or those who had condemned him to death, he was free to say whatever he wanted to say. And so that used to take place there. there was, it was a place of, of execution, of hanging. And then when you move into uh, around 1855, uh, around that time, um, the other elements started to come in, dissatisfied elements of the masses of the people began to come to Hyde Park because it was, as I said, where the well-to-do would hang out. And they would come there and they would make demonstration and make protests and they would speak in that area. And then when you come into the 1860s, uh, I mean, literally riots were breaking out because now the government, the government of the day was opposing the demonstrators and the, the people who wanted to come there and say what they wanted to say. And so there was a, there was a tussle between the masses of the people and the government uh, elements. And ultimately, um, around 1872, well, in fact, in 1872, uh, via an act of parliament, um, Speaker's Corner uh, became a legal entity uh, where people now were entitled to actually have freedom of speech and freedom of expression in that area. Because again, the government are very wise. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the European, the British European, the white man in England, he is the smartest of all the Europeans. And if you study the European nations, you see most of them have suffered a popular, popular revolution of the people. But Britain has not. Because they are so wise, they know how to head off, how to get in front of the popular unrest or popular protest of the people. And so they determined that it would be better to capitulate and to allow a place for people who were dissatisfied within the society to be able to come and vent. And then the authorities could actually listen and see whether or not it was altogether revolutionary, whether or not it was ego, whether or not it was just vain speaking. Whatever it was, they, they would have an opportunity then at least of knowing what was happening in the society and they could take appropriate action. And so that's how Hyde Park Speaker's Corner uh, became established. And in fact, uh, for your listeners, uh, Brother Miles, if, if anyone is, is interested in learning some of that history uh, about Hyde Park, uh, they can actually go on to their um, browser on their, on their computer and type in um, let me see, I have something here type in Speaker's Corner, you have the right to remain vocal. And, and this is a film by Gavin White. If you type in that information, you, uh, a film will come up. It's very, very interesting. They even feature the Nation of Islam on this film. It, the film is entitled, You Have the Right to Remain Vocal. And it's a film by an individual uh, by the name of Gavin White. And in the film, they depict the Nation of Islam in this way, it says, Nation of Islam, Farrakhan's disciples, radical soldiers challenging. They don't go on to say who and what we're challenging, but that's the way in which the Nation of Islam is actually depicted in that film. And again, many people may not know, but, you know, Hyde Park Speaker's Corner, it's a very, very hostile environment. And also, it's given over to a lot of frivolity, a lot of foolishness, a lot of really crazy things are said and done in that place. And so when we went there as the nation of Islam, we had to distinguish ourselves. 
and we had to uh, really demonstrate that we were not there to be a part of the whole frivolous, mad, crazy kind of uh, things that would go on. And so literally when we came there, we had to cut down lots and lots of weeds. We had to do a lot of cultivation in order to establish a civilized um, atmosphere in order that we could operate within that atmosphere. And by the grace and mercy of Allah, we really went to war in uh, Hyde Park Speaker's Corner. And over several weeks, we uh, were able to wear down and dispose of many of the professional hecklers and those who were sent uh, to create madness and mayhem. And we were even able, because, you know, Speaker's Corner is a place where everyone speaks at once. There is no order. It is absolute chaos but we were eventually able to establish a situation where we could literally go there and give a formal lecture with very little uh, heckling and then a very formal and ordered questions and answers session would follow. And it got to the point where many Caucasians and uh, uh, um, Arabs and Asians and other people from around the world uh, would come and literally sit down on the hard... Uh, asphalt uh, 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 or they would take deck chairs uh, uh, nearby uh, or stand in front of us and stay for the duration of often two hours in order to hear a full lecture by uh, the members of the Nation of Islam and then ask their question and we would do our very best to answer those questions and many of those uh, lectures uh, uh, or parts of those lectures are now posted on the on YouTube on the internet and you can access those uh, if you go to Respect for Life Films that's one word Respect for Life Films but you know this really shows you um, some aspect of the work that we have done here in the United Kingdom in uh, Hyde Park Speakers Corner yes I must also add as well that um, many probably won't know but those lectures that you gave there, all of them were given without the aid of a PA system or any amplification equipment also. But, um, yeah, but Brother Miles, can I say? Go ahead, Brother. You know, sometimes uh, I, I would find myself in Hyde Park uh, really having to put my hand on my chest uh, and I would be so exhausted and so um, drained of energy and uh, out of breath uh, and you know it was a very very difficult thing to do because we had to speak at such a volume we, as you rightly said there was no amplification allowed within the confines of the royal parks um, and so therefore it was just purely voice power that we had to use and to speak at such a volume for such a length of time quite often when I would leave Hyde Park uh, when I was the principal speaker I would leave there with a tremendous headache I would leave there feeling extremely drained and you know it was a real test of stamina and as much as I enjoyed doing it uh, it, it really was a test on uh, on really giving the word in that type of environment especially when we had the, the hecklers and you had to shout above other people and it used to kind of upset me sometimes because I didn't want people to think I was uh, emotional or out of control but it of, of course it might come across like that because one had to be speaking at such a volume um, but it was really magnificent and you know when I look back on those lectures uh, they are really classic uh, uh, there was a particular time period around nine ten years ago when we were doing the bulk of those lectures and it's a classic period in our growth and development within the nation of Islam. Yes, sir. And I, I, I thank Allah for yourself for, for taping those and preserving those because, because it's history that should not be lost. Because when I look at what's happening now around the world, I see much of what we were talking about at that time come into fruition. And uh, I see so much of bearing of witness to the teachings and what we were uh, receiving from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the teachings of the most Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan now uh, um, manifest in itself in that it's revelation and it's only a matter of time before what we say actually becomes 
the latest headline. And so I, I thank Allah for those, for those opportunities that we had in Hyde Park. But yeah, it was very, 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 very hard work and uh, it took a tremendous toll uh, each Sunday when we would go uh, for our obligatory uh, two or three hours that we would spend down there. Yes, sir. Now, as you know, brother, um, Hyde Park is a very special place for me because I came to hear you speak there. I was invited by a brother to hear you speak there in 1997. And it was based on hearing you speak for between two and three hours. I'd never heard any black man speak like you spoke there. The fruit of Islam that surrounded you just looked awesome and sharp. And I was so inspired that I came there week after week and ended up coming to the mosque and became a Muslim follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad under the guidance of the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan in October of that year. So I have to ask you the question, brother. Do you have any plans to return to Speaker's Corner? I would say inshallah, brother. I say inshallah, if it be the will of Allah, it, it, it is a place that as we rebuild the nation of Islam in the UK, it is essential that we have that uh, public arena and that we utilize it because, brother, as you bore witness, and I remember you, brother Miles, very well uh, coming and by the grace and mercy of Allah to watch you make that transition and that transformation, that should tell us that really we should never abort such a place and such a mission because if we can transform one life, if one life can be saved, if one of our lost found brothers and sisters can be pulled out of the quagmire of madness of this world and have their life transformed in that manner, brother, then it's certainly worthwhile doing that work. I think Master Farad Muhammad said that he would climb a mountain, a mountain 40, 40 miles, miles high. high. To get one of us I think he said he would eat rattlesnakes. rattlesnakes That's right And so therefore brother I don't mind going back into Hyde, Hyde Park And killing and skinning And eating some more rattlesnakes <laughs> If that's what it's going to take To save one or two or three Or ten or twenty Or a thousand of our brothers and sisters Who pass through that place And might be inspired sufficiently Having heard the word in Speaker's Corner To want to come to a meeting and want to attempt to change their lives. So I certainly, in my heart, brother, uh, Hyde Park is on the agenda for the future, and uh, it will really depend on how we can um, organize ourselves effectively, because as you know, having been there, you know, there is a way that we have to do Hyde Park. We cannot go there in the manner in which others do it. The nation of Islam has to do it in a particular way. And so once we are in a position where we can do it effectively and properly, certainly, brother, my intention would be to go back. And all praises due to Allah. You are listening to Brother Leo Muhammad from the Nation of Islam in the UK.